what the heck is aloe vera and why is it important? You know, it's probably the most used food for the largest variety of health conditions on the planet. People think of it for sunburns primarily because somehow it stimulates a tissue regeneration. It kind of increases blood flow and helps things to heal faster. We know this and it's documented scientifically. From a nutrition perspective, people are using the inside of the plant for healing things in their bowels, for things like acid reflux, GERD, gastritis, you know, Crohn's, all of the inflammatory bowel conditions. People are also using it for the immune benefits in the, especially when it comes to uh, viruses and cancers. And there are scientific reasons why this makes sense. I know people are also using it a lot for uh, managing their sugar levels in, and I'm not sure if it's type one, type two or where, that is not much of um, our business. Um, we're, for the most part, our customers have irritable bowels or, or cancers, and they are using it to support themselves as they're fighting these conditions. When it comes to um, gut health, other people also will use it in the whole leaf, the outer leaf. Our brand is inner leaf only. I disagree with using the outer leaf, but people use it for the laxative effect. And I think if you have constipation, you have to go about fixing that other ways. I, I figure something's probably missing in your diet or, or neurologically, you know, stress in the nerve that's going to the bowels. Um, you know, probably uh, not chewing your food enough, or you don't have enough fiber, or not enough water, or or maybe your microbiome's been killed off, or you need some digestive enzymes, probably from your food or supplementally. You know, there's probably something missing in your diet, and that's probably or chemically things. You know, we, there's certain medicines that also cause constipation. So I don't think taking an outer leaf irritant to loosen the bowels is the right way to do that. But some people are using aloe vera uh, for that as well. So there's aloe vera inner gel, which is what we have. There's whole leaf, which some people buy for the laxative effect. So in a nutshell, that's what aloe vera is. You'll see it in a lot of skin products because it helps with anti-aging and beautification of the skin. Uh, but you'll see people consuming it internally because your gut is like the skin on the inside. It's funny. I like thinking of the um, the digestion tract, the digestive tract, almost like our skin folded in through our mouths, creating this tube, connecting our mouths to our anus. And it's really like the skin. It's this epithelial tissue. It's this uh, specialized tissue that essentially eats and drinks, and also excretes, just like our skin. They're very, very similar. What do you mean our skin eats and drinks? Yeah, what you put on your skin, um, your skin absorbs it, and it goes eventually into your bloodstream, and your skin also excretes. And So this is what our bowels do. This is what our skin does. It's almost like one in the same organ. And just like aloe vera topically can help heal tissues, ingest it, it can help heal tissues. Not only that, just like anything good that you eat, as it gets absorbed and carried in your bloodstream, can actually affect all tissues of your body. So in a nutshell, that's aloe vera. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we are the inner gel and that's what you were drinking. I am curious what you, because I haven't focused much on sugar levels and aloe vera. I have a funny story about it. but. Um, how did it affect you? That's a great question. I want to hear your funny story, by the way. Well, you know, I'm a chiropractor and I hired someone to work in my office and her second day on the job, she walks in and she's kind of uh, on the sad side and said, you know, I found out I have cancer again. I said, okay, don't worry about that. You know, um, you can go to the doctors, do what you have to do, but we're going to start changing things right now. And I gave her two bottles of the aloe vera. And I said, I want you to drink 
three full glasses of this every day. That's 24 ounces a day. That's a lot. But in, you know, when it comes to cancers, you know, sometimes we have to make some radical cleansing, healing changes. So uh, the next day she came in the office and she said, um, she's, you know, oh, she was in the bathroom all day. She didn't say anything till the day after that. She was in the bathroom all day. Okay. The day after that, she's in the bathroom all day. When I say all day, at least a third of the time that she was at work. <laughs> I mean, she was in the bathroom. <laughs> a long time, sure. And at the end of that, that uh, second day, she said, Dr. Haley, is it possible that the aloe runs right through you? Mm-hmm. And I remember my response like it was yesterday. I, I said, no, 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 not a chance. Well, not what I gave you anyway. I mean, if you bought your aloe from Whole Foods, yeah, but not what I gave you. She said, oh. I said, what do you mean, oh? She said, well, before drinking your aloe, I thought I would finish my husband's. He's drinking it for his diabetes. I said, oh, no. You know, which, what is it? And yeah, sure enough, she had, uh, they had gotten it from Whole Foods. And it was a whole leaf aloe vera. I said, oh, how much were you drinking? She said, I couldn't do three, three glasses a day. I said, thank God, three may have killed you. You know, she said, I could only do two. Oh, you know, when you're doing the whole leaf stuff, it, your serving size is tablespoons, not cups. <laughs> I mean, so, right. So she was basically drinking a version of aloe vera that had the outer leaf irritant. And yes. that's what was causing her to go to the bathroom so frequently. Yes. Interesting. I did not know about that. Okay. And, you know, for the, when it comes to the diabetes, uh, people that are using aloe vera for the most part really actually want the inner leaf gel, not the whole leaf, but, you know, uh, I, I suppose that both of them will have an effect on the sugar levels possibly, but um, the outer leaf is not a necessary component there. Mm, very interesting. Okay. So you had asked me, you said, how did, how did drinking aloe vera juice it, uh, affect your blood glucose? And the answer is, in full clarity, I have no idea, right? And and I would love this. I would love to come on here and be like, oh, okay, I started drinking this aloe vera juice, and all of a sudden my blood glucose came down, and it was noticeable. The truth is that uh, my blood glucose is like relatively well controlled, and so as a result of that, it's it's very hard to determine whether or not something that I'm doing is actually improving my blood glucose because we're looking for like tiny microscopic changes that are sometimes very hard to determine. Um, so I'll tell you this, I integrated aloe into my diet. Uh, it's been about a month and a half and I've been drinking it consistently and my blood glucose has been very well controlled. Right. Um, and when I say very well controlled, uh, to be specific, um, I'm using a blood glucose monitor, right? And so blood glucose monitor, I basically check my blood glucose eight to 10 times a day, depending on the day. So using just the blood glucose monitor, you can kind of calculate an approximate time in range, like the percentage of 100% of time that your blood glucose is in range. And my blood glucose is in range, according to my blood glucose monitor, 87% of the time. And then the remainder is a little bit high and a little bit low. But if I was wearing a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, the number 87 would likely be even higher because there's more measurements. And those more, those more measurements are coming in more frequently. And therefore, as a result of that, the, the, the time and range would actually be slightly higher, probably be closer to 92, 95, whatever it is. But the idea here is that um, when your time and range is that high, um, integrating things like aloe vera or exercise or whatnot, it just becomes harder to see. So I'll put it this way. I love the flavor of it. I love the way it makes me feel. I fed it to my wife. She drank some. She was like, wow, what is this stuff? We gave some to a friend of ours. And she was like, wow, what is this stuff? This stuff is really good. It's got a really, really clean, uh, I don't know, feeling to it. My blood glucose is very well controlled after drinking it for the next couple of hours. And I know that when, when I've consulted the research to try and figure out what is the direct effect of drinking aloe vera on blood glucose values, the research is abundantly clear. There's no, there's no denying the fact that aloe vera, when integrated into a, uh, when it, as an isolated variable, can dramatically improve blood glucose, can lower blood glucose by 20, 30 points on average and lower A1C values. So... I'm going based off of that information and my own personal experience, and I, I'm going to give it two giant thumbs up. Oh, awesome. And I'm suspecting that the research is really probably applicable to people that are probably eating the wrong diets and somehow 
the the mannose sugar molecule of the aloe vera is probably interfering with the uh, glucose levels, probably taking some kind of precedent over the glucose, and that's probably why why that's happening. But uh, for someone that is controlling their diet properly, such as yourself, um, it makes sense that it wouldn't be a significant uh, change. So I, I kind of suspected yeah. that you weren't going to have a noticeable difference because of who you are and how you're already controlling things by eating the right foods. True. I appreciate that, but it, it would have been nice to see, to be perfectly honest. But that's okay because there's still, you know, um, there were no negative benefits of consuming it at all. And um, it's something that um, I can, I would love to continue to have it in my diet on a daily basis. Um, if for nothing else, because having a cold glass of aloe vera juice just tastes awesome. 